taken up to heaven. All the choirs of angels are rejoicing. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now, as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, she, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Some people just love to talk, that they can't talk enough. It's as though they've got loads in their head and they just want to get it out. And perhaps you're sitting there thinking, listen to who's talking. <laughs> you know, but believe it or not, whilst I can talk like this, I, I'm a kind of introverted person and I, I'm not a great talker. I, I'm more of a listener. But you get people who just talk and talk and talk. And I mean, I know one person who talks so much that they don't stop at the full stop. You know, the full stop's there to let you breathe. They don't breathe. They just keep talking and talking and talking. And then you have people who you're talking to, and you know that they're not listening to you. They're already thinking about what they're going to say when you stop talking. And that there's no kind of dialogue going on there. And you know, to, to really have a good relationship with someone, you have to be able to listen as well. That's really important. Listening is key. Now, does that mean that you don't talk, all you do is listen? No. There has to be a mutual exchange, a give and take. That's how relationships work. That when you talk, you share something of yourself. When you listen, you receive something of the other person. So you need a balance of, of talking and listening. You know, I've got a group of friends, and we meet regularly. There's a whole crowd of us. Some of us have been friends from way back in school. Some of them are married. Some of them are single. There's a priest among them, and, and we meet on a regular basis. But boy, men, you'll understand this. See when those women start to talk. <laughs> Whoa, I, I just can't get my head around it. You know, they're talking simultaneously. They're talking over one another. They're talking... Um, about different things uh, um, at the same time. And, and I, just, I just can't understand it. It's, 
it's, it's like babble to me. Maybe it's a man thing, or maybe it's just a me thing. I just don't get it. Now, to their credit, they seem to get it. They seem to understand one another. They, they know what each other has said and, and, and get it. But to me, it just feels, it just feels so full and, and, and powerful and full of energy. You know, I say that because, you know, we see that, I see that in those female friends of mine, but we see it in the gospel today. You know, this gospel is, is, is kind of pretty special as far as the gospels go. There's not a man in sight. It's two women. This is filled with female energy. There, there is a mention of a man, Zechariah, but that's just to tell us it was Zechariah's house that all this took place in. Zechariah is not there. This is a dialogue between Elizabeth and Mary, and boy, can they talk. And Mary talks the most. You know, we hear in that gospel, she just busts out into this, this talk. It's, in fact, Scripture scholars tell us, in fact, it was a, a hymn of the early church. But Mary is just bursting to get all this out. And she even at one point says, you know, I'm, all generations will call me blessed. You know, is Mary one of those talkers that is only interested in getting out what she wants to say? No, there's something much more profound going on here. There is, in fact, a dialogue. It begins with Elizabeth saying to Mary, why should I be visited and have a greeting from the mother of my Lord? Blessed are you who believe that God would be faithful to the promise that he made to you. That's how Elizabeth greets Mary, her cousin. Mary, newly pregnant, rushes to Elizabeth to share her good news. Elizabeth, newly pregnant, longs to welcome her and to share her news too. And after Elizabeth's greeting, Mary is just bursting with joy. She just wants to get this all out. And so we have this beautiful thing that we now call the Magnificat. And the Magnificat is a proclamation not of Mary, but of God. And what is apparent with Mary is that before she speaks, she listens. You know, in the Gospel of Luke up to now, Mary has been a listener. She has heard the angel make this invitation to her to be the mother of the Lord, and she has said yes. And now she wants to share that good news. She is so in tune with God, what God wants of her that she just desires to share it. And so we have this proclamation, and when Mary says, I'll be blessed for all ages, that's not because of anything that Mary has done. It's because of God's love and mercy working in and through Mary. That's why she's blessed, because she has listened to God's word and she has said yes to that word. She gives her life in action. And then she goes on to proclaim what that kingdom of God might look like. The kingdom of God is a kingdom where the powerful and the rich are not really players in the kingdom. You know, the values that we hold in this world as being valuable have no value in God's kingdom. You know, God wants the humble. He wants the poor, the meek. And he blesses them. He makes them special in his kingdom. The values of this world have no place in God's kingdom. And Mary hears that and understands it and proclaims it. She wants us to know that God's kingdom is of a, of a completely different order. You know, and what we discover with this feast day, the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven, where Mary is spared the effects of death and received into the glory of the presence of God the Father, 
what we are celebrating today is that Mary is so in tune with what God is saying to her that this is her destiny. You know, we see in the life of Mary that she was so in tune with God's plan. She agrees to conceive through the power of the Holy Spirit. She walks with Jesus throughout his ministry. You know, and we see ultimately Mary experiences a death, the death of her son. And she is there to hold her son, to mourn her son when he is taken down from the cross. You know, that must be the hardest thing for a parent to do, to mourn the loss of a child. Perhaps some of you have done that. And I think for mothers in particular, that's a death. The child dies, but part of them dies also. Some of you may have experienced that in your lives too. You know, it's a deep, profound moment. And so Mary, in a sense, dies with her son. And so as today's feast day says to us, that for her to die again would be superfluous. There's no need. She's so in tune with God that after her death, she experiences the resurrection. After the death of her son, she is caught up in his resurrection. And so Mary is offered to us as the ultimate model of discipleship, of what we are called to be. And what we are called to be are people who listen to what God asks of us, who discern God's will for us, and with a joyful and generous heart, each of us are invited to say yes to God for what He asks of us, for what He desires us to be, to say yes. So we need to listen, like Mary, to hear how God is touching us, how God is speaking to us. But it doesn't end there. We need to be like Mary also, in bursting with joy, in wanting to share this good news with anyone who will listen to us. So yes, we are called to be speakers, to talk a lot, to talk a lot about the glory of God.